in every social media everyone is talking about how to generate images videos using ai tool but have you ever thought like can you build your own ai tool if not let's do it together this is the chat gpt ai tool where you can ask any question and if you're not using paid version then you will get a limited number of questions so in this video i'm going to show you how to build your own ai tool like chat gpt you can ask unlimited number of questions and you'll get the answer how about asking question like build 3d cube using css did you see that? After a few seconds, you will get HTML as well as CSS code with explanation. How about asking general questions like which is the highest mountain of the world? So now you can see we are getting that accurate answer. Similarly, I am giving two modes, dark mode and light mode. You can set any mode as you prefer. Similarly, with the help of that add new chat, you can create new chat update that chat's title as well as you can delete a specific chat without further ado let's start hello and namaste everyone this is jitsar with coding design welcome to our channel if you are new here please be sure to hit that subscribe button let's create index.html file inside that if i type exclamation sign and hit that tab button then you will get this html5 boilerplate now let's give the title. For the title, I'm giving build chat GPT using vanilla JavaScript, or you can call it chat GPT clone. With the help of live server extension, let's open this index.html file in our default browser. Now within the body tag, let's create div with class name app. Inside that, I'm creating a side element. And next to that, let's create main element. Within the aside element, I'm creating nav element. Similarly, within the main element, let's create div with class name hints. And duplicate it for more two times. For the second div, let's give class name QA. And also for the third div, request. Let's create div with class name nap top. And next to that, I'm creating on dot list. Within the div with class name nap top, I'm creating button with ID air chat. And within that, let's give some icon. For the icon, I'm taking the help of this website called Iconify Design. So with the help of this website, you will be able to use any libraries. You can see they do provide more than 150,000 open source vector icons. Now if you click this icon sets, you can see there are different icon libraries that you can use. Or you can go through these different libraries of icons and you can choose any one of them or you can choose more than two as well. For this video, I'm gonna choose this bootstrap icon. Now within the source bar, if I search plush, and if I click that plus icon, at the bottom did you see that? We'll get different information about these icons. If you wanna use directly as basic code, then you will be able to get them. But I wanna use HTML code. So if I click that HTML, and now you can see, you will be able to use this web component. And before that, you need to give the link. So there is Iconify Designs Minify version of JavaScript link. But I have noticed that this link, it doesn't work. So if I go deep down, you can see it gives more detailed information about how to use. If you scroll down, you can see there are two links. That first link, it doesn't work. So if you copy that second link, similarly, if you are using React, then you can copy this code. And also there are different options so you can go through this documentation so i'm copying this second link i want to paste that link so within that button i can copy this web component and paste it there now with the help of this web component you'll be able to get that loss icon and with the help of this link it will automatically generate svg icons so in your browser did you see that we're getting that plus icon similarly next to that i'm writing new chat Now let's create order list with class name chats. Within that let's create list items. And inside that list item I'm creating two divs. For the first div, again I want to give different icon. So once again in our source bar, if I type chat, I want to take this icon. And now you can copy that web component and paste it there. Next to that I'm creating span with class name chat title. Again I'm giving new chat. Now within the second div, once again, let's give two different icons and in our source bar, if I try trash, okay, I want to take this icon. Okay, now you can copy that web component and paste it there. Uh, so for each icons, I want to give the same class name that is icon. And also I'm sourcing another icon pin. So I want to take this icon 
so one second let's copy that web component and paste it there similarly let's give class name icon so now you can see how we are getting that trash and pen icon now let's go inside that ordered list and let's create a list items within that list item once again you can copy this icon and paste it there along with that i'm writing clear conversation so i'm taking this same trash icon and next to that let's create another list items and once again let's give icon name gear so i want to take this icon once again you can copy this web component and paste it there and don't forget to give their class name icon for that web component okay and next to that i'm writing settings once again you can select this code and duplicate it for more two times and also let's change that name as well okay i'm giving light mode and english so now if you have noticed there we can just change that icon attributes value in order to change any specific icon so if i search bright so you can give that icon name brightness high and also for the fourth icon i want to give globe so i want to give this globe americans okay now in your browser did you see that oh we are giving different icons it's time to style this side navigation bar for that let's give the link for our styler css file so as you can see in this same folder i have already created styler css file and within that i have already written few lines of css code so you can see in order to prevent browser's default margin and padding for the inversion selector i am giving margin and padding to zero for the box size i am giving their inherit but for the html tag i have given their box size into border box and for the font size of 62.5 percent and also for the body i have given there some specific font font size of 1.5 rem and i'm giving font family to poppins I want to create different color variables within the root shadow class i am giving primary variable where i am storing linear gradient color for the direction i am giving 45 degree for the first color let's give this dark blue color for the second color i am giving light version of same blue color let's duplicate this code and let's change that variable name to dark mode now once again for the first color i want to give another dark version of blue color and for the second color let's give a bit lighter version of that same dark blue color and also within the variable text color and scroll bar i'm storing white color when you are giving class light at that time we will change that dark mode variables value to ls blue text color to this black color and scroll bar to that dark blue color so if you give class light for the with class name app and you will be able to change all the different colors in order to remove that bullet points for the order list let's give list style to none and for the list items that is within our order list let's give padding top and bottom to 1.2 rem for the left and right 1 rem Similarly for the font size let's give 1.4 rem and also I want to give some rounded corners for that I'm giving border radius of 0.6 rem. Similarly now when you hover any list items at that time I want to give background color to this white color with some transparent value. And for the cursor let's give pointer when you take your mouse near to that list items you will get that pointing hand icon but now you can see you won't be able to see that white color background as you can see our whole page background color that is white so for the side what if i give background color to this primary variable so the variable where we have stored this linear background color that was the linear gradient color so i need to remove that color so now in your browser did you see that when you hover you will be able to get that white transparent background color with rounded corners similarly i want to change all the text color value into white color now you are able to change that icons as well as text color similarly for all the button elements you will get that default styles so i want to change that background color to transparent and also i want to remove that border so i'm giving border to none for that pointing hand icon let's give cursor to pointer similarly i want to give border radius of 0.6 rem so that i would be able to get rounded corners now you can install this david class name app so for the class app i'm giving height of 100 viewports height for the background let's give that variable name dark mode as you can see we have given another uh, gradient color and for the text color i'm giving same css text color variable 
and so let's give display to flex and for all the text that is within our side navigation bar i want to give text transform to capitalize so that all the starting letters that will begin with capital letter and let's give width for the width i'm giving 20 percent and also i'm giving padding of one rim and also now you can style that main element for the main element i'm giving width of 75 percent now let's adjust these screens and it's time to style that nav element and also day with class name nav top. So for the nav let's give display to flex and let's change that flex direction to column. For the justify content I'm giving space between. Okay you won't be able to see any changes so if I give height of 100% now you can see these two elements they are splitted um, so when you hover you will be able to get that white transparent background color but there isn't any kind of transition so for the list items let's keep transition i'm giving duration of 0.2 second for the timing function let's give is and out so now you can see you will be able to get that smooth transition now it's time to install that button element okay so for the button element that is within our nav I want to give border for the width let's give 0.1 rim for this style let's give solid and for the border color let's give this white color similarly for the width let's give 100 percent for the padding and margin bottom i'm giving one rim now let's change that text color for the color let's give this white color and so let's take that text to left side for that i'm giving text align to left now you can duplicate the same code and bring it down there and when you hover that button element i want to give some transition for that button element so for the transition duration i'm giving 0.2 second for the timing function i'm giving is and out so now when you hover at the time i want to give background color to white color and for the text color let's change it to black color so now you can see when you hover you'll be able to get that white background colored button now let's style this david class name nap top or within that you can see there is honored list so now we need to style these elements so for the honored list that is within our david class name nap top let's keep maximum height of 35 rim for the overflow y i'm giving auto okay instead of that auto i want to give overlay so that scroll bars width will be included within our under list elements width so now if i create more list items so i'm duplicating okay now in your browser you can see you'll be able to get different list items but you can see we are not able to scroll okay it's because that's not the minimum height that must be maximum height so that is my bad now you can see uh, you are able to get that vertical scroll bar mm, and for all the scroll bars i want to give our custom scroll bar so for that let's give the pseudo element scroll bar along with that webkit prefix and i'm giving width of 0.5 frame similarly you can select all this code and duplicate it and for the scroll bar thumb let's give this background color i'm giving this css variable scroll bar as you can see within our scroll bar we have stored the dark blue color and also i want to give border radius of 0.5 rim so now if i give class light along with that day with class name app you can see in your browser you will be able to get that light mode so as you can see when you are taking to the light mode you will be able to get that dark blue scroll bar within our side navigation so i need to change it to white for that let's duplicate this code and bring it down there we don't need this code you can remove that we just need that background color so for the background color let's give white color um, but we need to target to a specific element so for that i'm giving a side where we have the nav element within that we do have the with class name nav top and this vertical scroll bar uh, this is the part of our honored list so let's get that ul you'll be able to get that vertical white scroll bar um, now you can remove that class light from our deep with class name app and now you can see whether it is dark mode or light mode you will be able to get that white color vertical scroll bar i think now we can remove these elements okay let's duplicate this code and bring it down there now let's start list items for the background color i want to give white color with some transparent value similarly i'm giving padding of one rim 
for the display let's give flex and also justify content to space between align items to center now you can see they are now in proper position i want to give some box shadow for that for the x offset let's give zero for the y offset i'm giving 0.3 rem for the spread value let's give 0.7 rem and also i want to give the color for that i'm giving this black color with some transparent value i think i need to create one more list item so did you see that there isn't any gap between the list items for that let's duplicate the same code and bring it down there and i'm giving margin bottom to one rem now you can see you'll be able to get that space but i don't want to give that margin bottom for our last child so for that i'm giving not pseudo class and within that you can pass last child pseudo class now with the help of this code you'll be able to prevent margin bottom for our last list element now it's time to give some extra elements that is within our main element so within the div with class name hints i'm giving image with class name logo and for the source let's give as you can see in our same folder a way to have a folder name images and within that there are two images logo.png and loading.gif so for the source let's give images slash logo.png in your browser you can see that huge logo so now we need to give proper height and width for the class logo that is within our main element let's give width and height of 4 rem and also i want to give filter let's give brightness to 120 percent so that will get a bit brighter version of that logo now you can see next to that let's create paragraph element and i'm giving some hints for our user now within the div with class name q a let's create another div with class name result so within that div i'm creating another div with class name question and let's duplicate it for the second div let's give class name answer now within the first div with class name question let's give some icon so for that if i sort portion okay let's take this icon now you can copy that web component and paste it there so for each icon as you know i'm giving class name icon but i want to give different color for this icon for that let's give their extra class name that is blue next to that let's create as three heading and you can give there your question Now within your debit class name answer, you can duplicate the same icon and bring it down there. Now you can just change that icon's name. So let's go and search robo. Let's take this robot icon. So you can just copy that robot and paste it there. And instead of that blue class, let's give the green. And next to that, let's create paragraph tag. So this is what you get in your browser. Now within your debit class name request, let's create another debit class name input group. You can duplicate the same icon and bring it down there now we don't need that class name green and we can change that robot icon to portion fill gear and next to that i'm creating input element with type text and for the placeholder let's give provider prompt and also i'm giving auto focus so that when you visit this page it will automatically focus here and next to that let's create button element with id send and within that again i'm writing send now for the div with class name hints, I want to give the same common CSS property on that we have given for our side element. So with the help of that comma, I'm sharing the same CSS property, but I don't want to give that width and padding. So for the aside, let's give that separate width and padding. And also we can give separate CSS property for our div with class name hints that is within our main element. Let's give separate padding of two rim. Similarly, let's give bullet radius of 1 rim. Now for the main element, you can give height of 100%. And also let's give padding of 2 rim. Now you can see there is some gap. Similarly, let's take it to center. For that, I am giving margin top and bottom to 0. And for the left and right, auto let's give display to flex let's change that flex direction to column and justify content to center and also let's give some gap for that i'm giving gap of two rim now when you hover any divs that is within our main element 
at that time let's keep transform scale to 0 0.998 and in order to keep some transition let's keep transition name to transform for the duration 0.2 second and for the timing function let's give is and out i think that transition should be within the d that is within our main element so let's bring it down there now you can see when you take your mouse you'll be able to get the kind of zoom out effect now let's give some different style for our icons so for the class name icon that is within our main element let's give font size of 3 rem now you can see a bit bigger version of icons now for the class hints and for the div with class name results divs Let's give display to flex. Align items to center. And column gaps to 1.5 rem. Now you can install this div with class name QA, which is within our main element. For that class QA, let's give overflow y to auto. Now if you select hold this code and duplicate it now you can see when you create multiple elements you will be able to scroll as you can see we have already given separate code for our vertical scroll bar now you can remove these elements now for the d with class name result that is within our d with class name q a let's give width of 100 percent for the padding i'm giving 1.4 rem Similarly, you can copy this same code and paste it down there. For all the divs that is within our div with class name QA, that is within our div with class name result, let's give padding of 1.5 rem. You can select all this code and duplicate it. Now you can target a specific class name question. So for the div with class name question, let's give background. I'm giving this dark mode CSS variable. And talking about border radius for top left and right, I'm giving one rem for bottom left and right zero. Now you can see at top left and right corner, you will be able to get that rounded corners. Similarly, you can select this code and duplicate it. Now let's give for the D with class name answer. Now let's change that background color. Let's change it to white color with some transparent value. And also instead of top left and right corners. So now for the answer, I want to give it to bottom left and right. So you can reverse that step. Now you can see, I think it's looking much more better. As you can see, for these two icons, I have gave separate class, blue and green. So now let's style these icons. So for the icon class, blue and green, let's give padding of 0.6 frame. And for the border radius, I'm giving 50% so that I could make circular shape. Now you can duplicate the same code and bring it down there for the class green let's give this background color i want to give this spring green color there isn't any changes okay i have done there some mistake that is not hyphen that must be full stop or period okay because that is our class so that is my bad now you can duplicate the same class blue and bring it down there we can give separate background color i want to give this same blue color so let's copy and paste it there now you can see you will be able to get that different background color with different icons for a specific question and answer so now let's tell this d with class name request and also input element so for the d with class name request let's give display to flex and also i'm giving gap of one rim and align items to center okay there isn't any changes so why is that oh because i have given their div with class name input group within our div with class name request so i think we don't need that separate div okay so you can remove that div with class name input group you can see there is some changes now you can install that input element that is within our div with class name request so for the input element let's give width of 50 rem for the pairing let's give 2 rem and also I want to remove that border for that I'm giving border to none and let's give outline for the width I'm giving 0.1 rim for the style solid and for the color let's give this same spring green color and also I want to give some rounded corners for that let's give border radius of 0.6 rim when you type anything within that input element I want to change that 
font size okay for that let's use font size of 1.6 frame so now you can see when you type you'll be able to get that bigger version of text now let's style that button element that is within our day with class name request so for the button i want to give padding top and bottom to one rem for the left and right two rem and also let's give background color let's give this same spring green color and so let's change that text color i'm giving white color so now let's take these elements uh, exactly at the center so for that for the main you can give their align items to center so in your browser you can see everything is brought to the center but now you can see our question as well as the answer on their width that is totally messed up so you can give their specific width for our d with class name hints and d with class name q and a let's give width of 100 percent Now in your browser you can see this is exactly what i want now you can take it to the full screen by pressing f11 key and now for the day with class name app if i give class light okay at the time you can see our questions and answers icon that will change into black color but i want to change it to white i want to give some background color for our questions as well as for our answer for that whenever you are giving class light for our day with class name app so there won't be any space okay be careful at that time for our day with class name question so that is within our day with class name result q a and main element let's give back on color i'm giving this light blue color in your browser did you see that now you will be able to get that different background color in your light mode similarly now you can select this code and duplicate it now for our class name answer you can change that background color to white color and also you can give that same box shadow i think now it's better to create a separate variable for our box shadow so let's copy this code and i'm giving their variable box shadow so let's create that variable box shadow for the box shadow let's paste the same code that we have copied and now you can give same css variable box shadow for our class name answer now in your browser you can see you'll be able to get that white background color with some box shadow and also if you have noticed there for our question and answer icons change into black color so i want to give the same white color for the icon that is within our day with class name q a now let's give x color to white color now you can see you will be able to get that white color icons and also i have noticed there in your site navigation there isn't any proper space between our icon and text so for that Let's duplicate the same code and bring it down there now for the class icons that is within our side element you can give margin right of 0.6 frame now you will be able to see their proper space now when you click that specific new tabs title i want it to be editable so for that for the span with class name chat title you can give their extra attribute called content editable so now with the help of this attribute you will be able to edit that new chats title but you can see you will get that default outline so we need to give our custom css property for that you can select any attribute within that square bracket i'm giving their content editable so when you focus at that time let's give outline to none and instead of that outline i want to give border bottom i want to give width of 0.1 ring for this style let's give solid and for the color white okay now you can see that it's really huge border okay that is not one rim that must be point one rim now you will be able to update these chat titles so this is exactly what i want now you can remove that class light from our day with class name app we need to add you know dynamically this class with the help of javascript code so whenever you are clicking any specific buttons when you are typing any specific text within our input field so all these interactions will be done with the help of javascript code so within the same folder let's create a script.js file just below the link that we have given for our standard css file let's give link for our javascript file so for this script i'm giving source let's give script.js file and also along with that you need to write their default so this default attribute this is really necessary because we are giving link for our javascript file within our head element uh, let's give some space okay now in our script.js file we need to select these different classes and id so in a script.js file i'm creating constant variable app and i'm assigning document.query selector 
so let's select that they with class name app and along with that let's give their comma i'm giving their comma the reason is that i don't want to give constant keyword multiple times so now you can duplicate the same code let's change that variable name app to mode so now we are selecting list element with id mode as you know this video is a bit lengthy so in order to save some time with the help of same technique i'm selecting different classes as well as id and i'm storing in different variables and also let's give some comments okay now we need to toggle light mode and dark mode whenever you are clicking that specific option called light mode so for that as you can see i have already selected list item with id mode but i have noticed there i did forgot to give id for our specific list items so for that let's give id mode and also okay that id should be within our list item so let's give that id delete so now whenever you are clicking that specific list item we need to toggle that light mode and dark mode for that i am writing mode dot add event listener so we are listening to the click event for the second parameter you can give the callback so i'm giving function toggle mode i think we need to take it up so now let's create that function toggle mode and within that let's create constant variable light mode and i'm assigning app.classlist.contents and within that i'm giving light so with the help of this code i'm checking whether app does it contain class name light or not okay so if it contains it will return true otherwise false so that boolean value we are storing within our light mode variable now next to that you can write something like app dot class list dot toggle so we are toggling the class name light and for the second parameter you can give their boolean value so based on that variable we'll be able to add and remove that class light from our d with class name app um, but you can see if it's our light mode then we need to remove that light mode okay so for that i'm giving the exclamatory sign so that i can convert that true boolean value to false so when we are in light mode we'll remove that class light and when we are in dark mode we will add that class light along with that d with class name app so in your browser if i click that light mode option did you see that now you'll be able to add and remove that light mode and dark mode similarly when you are clicking that light mode option i want to change that icons as well as that text into dark mode so for that just next to that code i can write something like mode dot inner html is equal to so now you can copy this whole icon as well as that text and paste it there i'm wrapping within the back tick in your keyboard just above the tab button or next to number one key you will be able to get this symbol so with the help of this template literal you will be able to manipulate your string as well as javascript variable in much more simpler way let's make our text as well as icon dynamic so for that i will take the help of ternary operator so now you can cut that icon name and within that i am writing dollar curly bracket so now you can take the help of that variable light mode so you can give their question mark and if we are in light mode at that time we'll give our icon name brightness high but if we are in dark mode at that time let's give our icon name to moon similarly now you can do the same thing for our text as well if we are in light mode at that time we'll give our text to light mode and if we are in dark mode we'll change our text to dark mode so once again in our browser when you click that dark mode option you'll be able to change into light mode and along with that we are changing our icon now when you hit that clear conversation button you need to delete all the new chats options so in order to do that as you can see on there is list with id delete and i have stored that list within the variable clear so now you can duplicate the same code and instead of that mode you can write there clear so now when you hit that delete conversation button at that time let's call the function instead of giving any specific function i'm using the arrow function and there is just one line of code so i don't need to use any curly bracket you can use that variable name charts as you can see i have already created ordered list with class name charts So I can write something like charts dot you know HTML is equal to if I give empty string and once again if I hit that button called clear conversation did you see that now you will be able to clear every new chats option so now when you click this new chat button you need to add new chat options okay so for that as you can see I have already created button with ID add chat. So now you can duplicate the same code and instead of that mode let's write add chat 
so now when you click add chat button at that time let's call the function name add new chat but as you can see i haven't created any function name add new chat so let's create that function and you can write something like chats dot inner html plus equal to so be careful i'm giving the plus equal to so with the help of this code you will be able to append specific elements whenever you are clicking that add new chat button so again i am using their backtick and within that i think before that i need to add two more features that is when you click that pen icon you need to be able to edit that title of chat or when you press any trash icon delete that specific chat for the icon trash within that same html component let's give click event so i am writing on click is equal to within double quotes i am giving update chat title function and within the second icon which is the pane icon uh, let's give the same on click event and i am assigning remove chat function and within these two functions you can pass there this keyword that represents web component or in our case you can call it icon so i have done some mistake instead of using remove chat function for that pane icon i need to give their object chat title function so just reverse the position that's my bad Uh, but you can see we haven't created that two functions so in our script.js file let's create that two functions so i am creating constant variable object chat title and i am assigning error function along with that argument el on uh, that represents that specific element that we have clicked so you can duplicate the same code and instead of that object chat title you can give remove chat so now when you click that pen icon at the time you can write something like l dot parent element so as you can see when you call that remove chat function that specific web components parent element that is the div and if we talk about that divs parent element that is our whole chat so i can write again something like dot parent element dot remove so with the help of this remove method now you'll be able to remove that specific list element i think i have done some mistake when we are clicking that trash icon at the time i have used their remove chat function so instead of that object chat title now you need to give their remove chat function okay now once again in our browser did you see that when i click that trash icon you will be able to delete that specific new chat option now before giving that object feature how you can copy this whole list element and you can paste it within that backtick where i have given their chat.innerHTML so let's uncomment that code whenever you are clicking that pen icon at the time we have called their function name object chat title along with that this keyword so now we need to get its parent element and and previous sibling element and within that as you can see we do have spawn with class name chat title which is the last child so you can write something like l dot parent element dot previous element sibling and if i give again dot last element child dot focus now with the help of this method you will be able to focus that specific chats title in our browser when i click that specific chats pen icon did you see that now you will be able to update that chats title something like this okay i think i have misspelled there so let's do some correction now you can see when you click that new chat button you will be able to create new chat options now it's time to give the real feature so now whenever you are giving any specific question with the help of that input field or oh, first of all i need to display that questions uh, within these two headings okay and after that i need to give back the answer so as you can see there is input element within the div with class name request and i have already selected that input element okay i think i have done there some mistake instead of that class input group i have to give their class request and also you can see i have already selected button with id send so now with the help of these two elements i'll be able to ask any specific question so now you can duplicate the same code and instead of that add chat you can give the send and now whenever you are clicking that send button let's give the function name get answer and once again let's duplicate the same code instead of that send now you can give that variable name input but this time before directly calling that get answers function i want to give error function along with that e argument on um, that represents event and i want to give condition if e dot key before that i need to change that click event 
so this time let's give key of event and within that if condition you can write something like e dot key triple equal to so that is the comparison operator if that key is equal to enter then within that input field as soon as you hit the enter key you'll be able to get your answer uh, so you can call function name get answer but as you can see i haven't created that function name get answer so just down below let's create that function name but this time i'm creating a synchronous function so the reason behind creating this asynchronous function is that uh, within this function later on i'll be using fetch api so it might take a bit longer time to get the response uh, you can use their async keyword and within that i'm taking the help of try and catch statement so within the catch you can give the error and you can give there something like console.error let's pass that argument so now whenever there is any kind of error you will be looking at your console now within the try statement i can write something like app.query selector now i can select the d with class name hints and within that you can see we do have paragraph element so i need to select that specific paragraph element and if i write dot inner html is equal to input dot value then now you can see in our input field if i give any specific question and if i hit send button did you see that it will automatically change that text of our hands i think instead of that input dot value let's create constant variable question and i'm assigning input dot value so now instead of that input dot value you can replace with this variable question whenever you are giving any kind of specific question at that time you need to be able to create separate element for our question as well as answer so for that as you can see within d with class name q and a we do have their separate element for our questions and answer so you can copy these two elements within the result variable i have stored that q and a i think instead of that result let's change that variable name to q and a so just down there you can write something like q and a dot in a html again i'm using their plus equal to let's give their create chat function and let's pass the argument question as you can see i haven't created that function name create chat so let's create that function and let's take that argument as question or you can give any different name okay it doesn't matter and within that function let's return so now within the small bracket i'm giving their backtick and inside that backtick you can paste this whole code now we can make that questions dynamic that we have provided within our s3 heading i can write something like dollar curly bracket question and also for our answer instead of that dummy text you can give image element and for the source i'm giving images slash loading.gif and along with that let's give the class name loading now in our style css file let's style that class name loading i'm giving height of 3.2 rem and for the width let's give auto so let me show you what's really going on whenever you are giving any specific question did you see that you will be able to create a separate element for our question as well as answer but in our answer section you will be able to get kind of you know something is going on there i mean like our bot is processing the answer instead of this image you can use their separate icons like spinner icons so you can do something like instead of that image you can copy this separate web component code for this spinner that's your choice and also along with that create chat function let's give another argument id but as you know i haven't created that id so let's create that const id is equal to again i'm giving the generate id function but we haven't created that function so let's create that generate id function within that i'm writing return math.random and if i write to a string and i'm passing there 16 so with the help of this method i'll be able to convert our random numbers into hexadecimal number and in order to make it more unique i'm adding with date dot now which will give you current time in milliseconds i think it's better to store all this code within our variable let's give the variable name id for now you can return that id as you know i am generating their random number so for that i am writing the id dot sophistia so within that method for the first parameter you can pass the starting position so i am giving there two and for the second parameter you can give the total number of a string that you want to extract so i am writing their id dot length minus two 
So you might be thinking what's really going on. So now with the help of that math.random method, you will be able to generate random numbers, but you will get something like zero point long decimal digits, something like this. And I want to extract all the digits except that decimal point and the number behind it. So for that, I'm giving their ID dot length minus two, and we are returning that ID and storing within our constant variable ID and same ID we are passing within our function name create chat. So for the paragraph, now you can give the ID attribute within double quote. I'm writing dollar curly bracket ID. Okay, I haven't passed that second argument, so you can give their ID. As soon as you create that new chart, let's select that specific paragraph tag with unique ID. So I'm writing cons p is equal to document dot get element by ID. So you can pass that same ID variable within that. So this code is just for demo purpose. Uh, later on, we'll remove this set timeout function. So with the help of this, I'm trying to do something like when you are giving any specific question, after two seconds, I wanna give the answer. So for that, for the second parameter, you can give the timeout. For that, I'm giving 2000, that represents two seconds. And within that callback, you can write something like p dot, you know, HTML is equal to. Uh, for now, I'm giving just Tommy text. So in our browser, if I give any specific question and if I hit the enter, did you see that after two seconds, you will get that answer. But when you are getting any specific answers, I want to give some kind of typewriter effect. I think instead of that dummy string, let's give empty string so that we'll be able to remove that loading animation. Let's create a separate variable message. Within that, we'll be storing our answer. Now, in order to give that typewriter effect, let's create the function name typewriter. And within that, I'm passing two parameters. For the first parameter, let's give the paragraph element and for the second parameter, let's give our answer that is message variable. Now let's create that function typewriter. And within that, let's take that argument as p and message. And within that function, I'm creating i variable and I'm assigning 0. And also let's create another variable interval and I'm assigning their set interval function. And for the second parameter, let's give timeout. I'm giving 15 milliseconds. And also within that callback, let's give the condition. I'm giving if masses dot length. If our masses length greater than i, then we'll clear our interval. So within that clear function, you can pass that interval variable. Else, let's increase our i variables value by one. And you can write something like p dot inner html plus equal to masses dot char at. So within that method, you can pass the same i variable. I think let's change the condition. Instead of this condition, let's give another condition. For the condition, let's give if i is less than the length of our message, then we'll increase our i value and we'll insert the each character within our paragraph element after each 15 milliseconds. Otherwise, we'll clear our interval. So with the help of this code, you'll be able to get a kind of typewriter effect. So let's check out if I give any random questions. Did you see that? After two seconds, you'll get a kind of typewriter effect so now what if i give another new question so at the time i want to take it to that new question i mean i want to scroll to that new question for that just above that condition you can write something like qna dot scroll top and i'm assigning qna dot scroll hide so now with the help of this code you'll be able to scroll to the bottom now let's duplicate the same text Now you will be able to see proper typewriter effect. But I have noticed there like there is something problem with our CSS. I want to keep that our bots icon just at the top instead of center. As you can see, I have given their align items to center. So because of that, we are vertically centering our element. In order to prevent that for the div with class name answer, you can give align items to flex start. So now you can see this is the exact position that I want. But as soon as you get the answer, I want to remove that question from our input field. So for that, you can write something like input dot value is equal to empty string. So now let's keep the question. Did you see that? As soon as you get the answer, you will be able to remove that question from our input field. Now you can remove that dummy answer. 
Now we need to get the actual answer. For that, you can take the help of this website called platform.openapi.com. If you want to go more detail, you can go through this documentation and you can see if you are using Python, you can install this package as well as if you are using Node.js, you can use it separately. But in order to use this API, you need the API key. If I click this link, okay, now you have to create a separate account for that. You can give your Gmail account or Microsoft account. So I have already created a separate account. As soon as you create your account, you will be redirected to this page. You can see with the help of this button, you will be able to generate your API key. So if I hit that button, and now you can copy your API key. So I have copied mine and in our script.js file, let's create a separate variable for our API key. I'm creating constant variable open AI API key. And now let's paste the same API key that we have copied. And if you go through API reference, you can see if you are using Python, you can copy this code. If you are using Node.js, you can use this code. Okay. But as you know, I'm using Vanilla JavaScript. So first of all, we need this URL. So let's copy this URL. And again, I'm creating separate variable for our URL. Let's paste the URL. And just bottom there, you can see we need to pass different options or something like for our headers. We need to pass data type along with our API key. So just down below there, let's create constant variable response as you can do. Let's take the help of fetch API. So I'm writing fetch and within that, let's pass URL as first parameter. And for the second parameter, let's keep options variable. As you can see, we have used their asynchronous function. So now you can use their await keyword. But as you can see, we haven't created that options. So now let's create that option variable. Within that options, I'm assigning object. For the first key, let's give method. I'm giving post. And so let's keep the header. Now you can copy this code and paste it there. So now let's separate this key and value pairs. Okay, now for the authentication, let's give our open AI API key. So you can write there backtick dollar, wrap it within our curly bracket. Now for the body. Again, you can copy this whole code and paste it there. Once again, we are separating its key and value pairs. Now for the content, instead of that dummy text, you can give our question that is input.value. Now with the help of this temperature, you can give accuracy of your answer. So I'm giving the zero so that we will be able to get more accurate answer. Now you can remove that set timer function. Instead of that, we'll give condition. I'm giving if response.ok. So now if we get the proper response from our endpoint, then okay, let's remove that code and we'll take hold this code within that if condition. And within that, let's create another constant variable data and I'm assigning response.json. Okay, that function it is also the asynchronous function. So I need to give their await keyword. Now we can take that data variable and within that message variable, we can store our actual answer. Before that, let me show you in the console what we are really storing within our data variable. If I ask a random question, okay, we are getting some error. As you can see within the body, we have gave their object. Now we need to convert it into a string. So now you can wrap all this code within the small bracket and you can write something like json.stringify. So once more, let's keep the random question. Did you see that? We are getting the response and we'll get the object. Within that, we do have key choices and that's the array. And within the first index, there is message. Again, that message, that is the object. And within that object, that content key, that is the exactly what we want. So you can write something like data dot choices and I'm accessing that first element. If I write dot message dot content, then now you'll be able to access that key content. So now with the help of this code, you will be able to get our actual answer. So once more, if I ask question like JavaScript loop with if statement. And if I hit enter, did you see that after a few seconds you'll be able to get that answer and if you have noticed there everything they are placed within the single line so it is really difficult to read as you know these answers they are stored within our paragraph element which is within the d with class name answer so in our installer css file you can duplicate the same code and bring it down there
so for our paragraph tag we can give their white space for white space i'm giving their break spaces so once more if i ask the same question but this time did you see that you will get that answer in more readable format so this is exactly what i want and also as soon as you ask any specific new questions i want to scroll down to the bottom so for that you can take the same code and as soon as you append new questions and answer you can give that code similarly or we didn't give any kind of validations for our input field so let's give two validations that is if user is not giving any kind of character then they won't be able to ask any questions similarly for the next condition as you know we are not getting the answer immediately it takes few seconds so during that time you won't be able to ask any questions like you won't be able to hit the enter key as well as hit that send button so in order to prevent that let's go back to our code editor okay i have noticed there like in our index.html file i have told you like to create our day with class and app within our body element but i think i have created that element just outside of that body element so now you can see when you are clicking that send button and as soon as you hit enter key within our input field immediately we are calling to our function get answer so within that try statement you can give the condition for the condition i am giving there if input dot value dot length if that length is greater than three users should give three characters in order to ask any question so now let's bring this code within that if condition Similarly, as soon as you ask the question, let's give something like input dot set attribute. So we are setting the read only attribute. For the second parameter, we can give true. You have to give that. And let's duplicate the same code. Instead of that input, you can change it to send. And let's change read only attributes to disabled. So when you get the answer at the time, we need to remove that attribute. So for that, let's duplicate the same code and bring it down there within our if condition. Now, instead of setting attribute, let's remove that attribute. And also, we don't need that second parameter. You can remove that. Once again, in our browser, let's ask the question, build 3D cube using CSS. And after a few seconds, did you see that? We are getting separate HTML code as well as CSS code. Now let's ask the general question number, which is the highest mountain of the world. Okay, now did you see that? We are getting the exact answer along with that height as well, you know. And also for the last time, let's ask another question. Let's give Java while loop with if statement. Did you see that? We are getting that Java code along with that explanation. So isn't this amazing? Now you can see you will be able to switch from dark mode to light mode and vice versa. Similarly, you will be able to clear all chair. You will be able to add new chair, update chair. Similarly, you will be able to delete a specific new chair. So I'm giving lots of functionalities for our app that I could and that's it. I do hope this was really helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did learn something, smash that like button. If you have any kind of queries, let me know in the comment box. Share this video if you think someone needs it. And also, if you haven't already ate, hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell icon. Remember, there is always more to learn. So keep learning.